How do I find wildlife to photograph? That is one of the questions which I am asked the most as a wildlife photographer. In this video I want to address this question and I want to go through my process, which is a simple three steps process. A few days ago I got a call from a good friend of mine who said that he had found a sparrowhawk's nest at a nature reserve right here in central Copenhagen. Sparrowhawks are always fun to photograph and I love spending time with them. And I thought that this was a great opportunity for me to go and photograph the chicks in the nest and see if there are any good stories around this that I can tell through a wildlife photograph. The first thing I did after I got the tip wasn't to rush out into the nature reserve itself. It was actually to look through Google Maps and get an overview of the area where I had got the tip uh, about the sparrow hole. I find that these online resources such as Google Maps and eBird are great tools for me to gather a lot of information about an animal without actually leaving my apartment. The first part of my process is the desk research and in this stage of the process I am actually not leaving my apartment here in Copenhagen. I am just sitting at my computer and trying to gather as much information about either an area or an animal as possible. I find that the more information I have about an area or an animal up front, the less time I have to be in the field with my binoculars. And this is very essential for like um, conserving my time and using it the most I can on photography itself. Because photography is why I'm doing this. So all this uh, work that I do up front all has to lead towards getting great photos. The second part of my process is going into the field and checking out the location for myself. I find that when I have a lot of knowledge about an area that I have gathered from Google Maps and eBird and resources like that, the best thing to do is to put it into the real life world by going out and scouting the location for myself. For this purpose, I always bring my uh, best tool, which is my pair of binoculars. And uh, with this tool, I scout all that I can because it I gets an extended reach on my scouting trips. Uh, I can see things which are much further away and I can like, get an overview from a location from a single vantage point. The most important thing in this second part of the process is to just like, go through uh, the whole area and scout the whole location out. Uh, I've already got the research from my desk research and from the tip from my from my good friend that the sparrowhawk nest is in here but I have to find it myself now and this is where it uh, sometimes is a bit tricky because it could be right uh, on top of me and uh, yeah there's no way of knowing uh, if they if the sparrowhawks keep quiet uh, I will most likely not find them, but sometimes I can like hear them calling for uh, their parents or I can hear the parents like flying towards the nest. So that is what I am looking for right now. And yeah, so uh, it's just a painstaking work of going through the whole woods and uh, yeah, looking low and high. I got actually really lucky because the nest is just up here. Uh, as I just said before, I listened uh, for the calls and I actually heard one of the chicks sitting up in the nest. So uh, this is really great. This puts me in a, in a perfect place for the next couple of hours because uh, I actually have three hours uh, until the sun goes down. So now I can just like begin the third part of the process and that is the actual photography. 
So anyway, this is the nest. Uh, I will just try and point towards it. You can see it right here. Uh, and yeah, I'm trying to keep my distance, not to disturb the uh, wildlife. And I'm just looking uh, like 360 degrees for some very nice angles to photograph it from. Actually seeing the sparrowhawk's nest for myself was great because that takes me out of the second part of the process, the field research, and puts me into the third and final part of the process, the actual photography. The third stage of the process is the actual height placement and photography. This is where I use all the data that I have gathered from my desk research and my field research to actually convert it into nice wildlife photographs. This is where I begin to think about all of the fun stuff about photography, such as composition, storytelling, and of course, light. So this is also where I'm placing my height and I'm looking for the right angles, the right perspectives, and trying to convert all of my newly found data into some actually uh, good photography. I've just put my camouflage on. It serves two purposes today because um, first of all, it serves the purpose of camouflaging me for the sparrow hawks up there. But second of all, there are like mosquitoes everywhere in here. Uh, and yeah, it'll just take the worst of them. I have put on insect repellent, but uh, it's not enough. It's never enough with insect repellent. <laughs> One of the angles that I have found to work the best is actually from right here, I can look like uh, through some branches and some leaves and I just have this single head of the sparrowhawk chick like sitting up in the nest and I think that actually works really well for what I'm trying to create so I think I'm just taking this photo right here The absolute most important part of the third step of the process is that we respect the wildlife and that we respect the nature, that we find the wildlife within. Um, the ethics of wildlife photography has to be sustainable so that we have something to photograph tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So always keep this in mind when you actually go out and photograph the wildlife. It has started to rain and I was becoming a bit un uncomfortable and I was actually heading home. But as I was, I saw that one of the chicks actually left the nest. And this is the first time I've ever seen this before. Uh, it happens every year, but to be there at exactly the right time, at the right place, uh, this is just amazing. I'm just standing here recording the chick as it sits outside of the nest and I can just show you. Here is my C9 on my tripod and right up here, I don't know if you can see it, that is the nest right there and r just to the right of the nest, right in front of my finger there, sits a young sparrowhawk and it is just completely still and it is very calm and it has made for a very nice subject to photograph. Just see it on the back of my screen right here. Alright, that's all from me for this time. I hope you found this insight into how I approach 
actually finding and photographing wildlife interesting. I hope to see you all in the next one.